today the glory of ancient Egypt is ruins and dust. And this greatest of the Earth's early civilizations, a thing of darkness and mystery. These mighty monuments tell us of a people who were rulers of the world, who created a civilization never surpassed for beauty and splendor. But the Egyptians were not only builders of monuments, they were human beings no different from ourselves. This is the story of a man who dwelt in the ancient land of the Nile 33 centuries ago. the Egyptian write this. In my place of exile on the shores of the Red Sea, there is no more desolate spot on earth. Soon the jackals and the vultures will make a poor meal of what is left of me. No monument will I began life as I am ending it, alone. I rode alone on the bosom of the Nile, in a boat of reeds, daubed with pitch and tied with fowler's knots. Thus the city of Thebes was accustomed to dispose of its unwanted children. front of the city, in the house of my foster parents, who had saved me from the river. My foster father lived there by choice, because he was, also by choice, physician to the poor of the city. From the rich he could have commanded princely fees, for he alone in Thebes was master of the ancient art of opening skulls. in a way. Good. You must never fear death. In our craft, death is a familiar companion. But this time, we'll cheat him. Any splinter of bone pressing on the brain. When I remove it, he will speak again and walk and live. Why, Father? Why? No one knows. From the beginning, I kept to myself. I used to wander alone on the banks of the Nile until the day came when I was ready to enter the school of life. In the school of life were trained the chosen young men of Egypt, 
of future scientists and philosophers, statesmen and generals. All the learning of Egypt lay in the keeping of the gods. For 10 years, I served them in the school that I might earn the right to call myself a physician. I learned to bend my body to them, but that was all. My mind still asked a question. Why? So anyway, be careful, the priest. Our classmate Horemheb, the best swordsman, the finest horseman, the fastest runner, and the strongest wrestler. And the first one to tell about it. Well, if you don't speak well yourself, no one will do it for you. This I learned from the gods. No. <laughs> You've drunk to what I am. Now drink to what I will be. For the day will come when I will carry the golden whip and lead you all into battle. Oh. You're that big, you're my friend. Wine. <laughs> He's had enough. Never enough for a friend. He'll finish the night in some gutter with his throat cut. <laughs> He's under my protection. <laughs> to your future. Future! <laughs> 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 Look at our brilliant physician. <laughs> hey, I'm a student. <laughs> He's got the real sick. <laughs> Can I help you? Things with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> he's alive! Who is he? <laughs> he's a stubborn, arrogant fool, but he's my best friend. Then take him home. The tavern wench can't give orders to the son of the falcon. The son of a cheesemaker, take him home. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, physician. Your friend is the fool. Not you. Why is it no one will ever answer me when I ask why? <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How did she know your father was a cheesemaker? <laughs> Queen of cities, Thebes of the Hundred Gates, capital of the world. After my graduation from the School of Life, I set myself up as a physician on the waterfront, far from my father's house, lest I steal his patients from him. But I found that not even the poorest of patients would come to the door of so young a physician. I had to go out into the streets in search of them. for that one. Come over here, into the shade. Here, sit down. I can help you. Under certain conditions, blindness can be cured with a needle. 
Alas, no physician can restore my eye. My first master put it out when I drank a jar of beer and refilled it in a manner which displeased him. <laughs> then what's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm as healthy as the 40 sacred baboons. My name is Kapta, and I've decided to be your servant. Even if I needed one, I couldn't afford it. And if I could afford it, I wouldn't employ a ragged beggar. I may be ragged, but I'm intelligent. I'm, I'm handsome, and I can read. Well, you're quite right, Master. I'm a poor servant, but then you're a poor physician. You deserve no better. I shall obey your orders. You may beat me within reason, and in return, I shall steal from you. Also within reason. Oh, then you admit you're a thief. We're all thieves, only the dishonest ones deny it. <laughs> I will improve your reputation. People will say he must be a good physician if he can afford a servant. With one eye, they will say he must be a poor physician not to have cured his own servant. Well, then I shall say that when you first bought me, I was totally blind and that you restored half my sight. <laughs> <laughs> master! Oh, master! chance. I told you I'd make your reputation. Come here, everyone. Come here and watch. You shall see such wonders as your eyes have never beheld. The gods themselves have instructed my master in his arts. Known to him are the ancient spells and potions of our ancestors. Come here and watch. Someone bring water. Here's water. Moisten a cloth and squeeze it between his lips. I'll need fire to purify my instruments. Oh, yes. Uh, fire? Bring fire for the worker of wonder. The fire won't be needed. He's dead. <laughs> observe, observe the wisdom and mercy of my master. Lest this poor soul be forced to hobble for the rest of his life on one foot, my master has granted him the boon of, of death. No one could have saved him. Saved him? For what? So the young physician is still asking why? Master, that's a dangerous woman. Dangerous? That look in her eye, the look of a cow for its calf, of a ewe for its lamb. Beware of such looks, Master. Her mind is on breaking a jar with you. On marriage. I don't even know her name. Her name was Merit. She was a tavern maid, and she could neither read nor write. She loved me all her life, but this I didn't learn until it was too late.
pity of the gods, Pharaoh is dead. appointment in the palace guards because of his birth. You don't have to lower your voice. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, I was refused. Refused because of my birth. But look at the ones I accepted. Mincing, perfumed idiots who carry sunshades and twitter like birds. How long till dawn? An hour, perhaps. Did you ever hunt lions? No. I saw a black mane male drinking from a pool at sunset. But if he's never hunted lions... He's under my protection, I told you once before. I need no protection. I bring you back the skin of a lion myself. Suppose the lion brings back your skin. What happens to me? Find another master to rob, richer than I am. Sinaway, please be careful. To pay our score. Benefit, my lord. So let's go before she changes your mind. Well, that's how I lost my eye. Lion hunting. Son of a cheesemaker. Killed. Be quiet. The god is coming. What's he talking about? He said the god is coming. Which god? He is coming. Atan. Atan? 
Look, he worships the face of the sun. Thy dawning is beautiful in the horizon of heaven. O living atom, beginning of life. What's the matter with him? He has the holy sickness. At least I can prevent him from biting his tongue. Well, we can't leave him here. Let's take him into the city. Seize them. What's wrong? What have we done? You'll find out in good time. Put them in chains. For two days, we were held without knowledge of the reason for our arrest. Then we were taken under guard to the royal palace. Silence on your faces. Our new Pharaoh comes on your faces before the living God. for this. Princess, come back. Mighty Pharaoh, king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Princess. Look, father. Hush. Your father's busy. But I want him to see my new monkey. Not now, child. Sit down, princess. Mighty Pharaoh, king of Upper and Lower Egypt, son of the sun. You have feet. Stand on them. You will please me much better if you will all rise. My heart is heavy because of my father's death. Let us finish our affairs as quickly as possible. The embassies of Hattie and Cush come to pay respect to the new pharaoh. There are gifts from... Later. I wish to see the two prisoners you spoke of. Are they here? Yes, sire. Come forward. On your knees. On your feet. Why have these men been held without trial? Their crime is sacrilege, sire. They laid hands on the sacred person of Pharaoh. Send away a physician, the son of Zanmut. Hold him him. The son of a cheesemaker. Come forward. For a cheesemaker, he has bold eyes. The other one, the physician. Notice his features. You are the son of Senmut? I've heard of his work among the poor. Come closer. Sire, he must die. He laid hands on you. I know that. It was to help me. The law makes no such distinction, sire. Have I the power to change the law? There is no limit to Pharaoh's power. The law is changed.
I appoint you physician to my household. I'm deeply grateful, sire, but I cannot accept this honor. Why not? I've sworn an oath to serve the poor. Because of your father? For that and other reasons. Senmut is not my real father. My parents must have been of the poor themselves, for as a baby I was cast adrift on the Nile in a reed boat. And you never learned who your parents were? Perhaps they were fowlers. The boat was tied with fowlers' knots. Fowlers' knots? Did you say fowlers' knots? Yes. Why do you ask, Mother? Curiosity, my son. You may honor your vows, Sinoe, and serve the poor. But on condition you bind yourself to come to the palace whenever I or my family have need of you. Thank you, sire. This other one's no healer, this cheesemaker's son. Yet he too profaned Pharaoh with his touch. Sire, may I speak? Speak. Haramheb saved your life by slaying the lion. What is Haramheb's desire? To let my sword drink the blood of Pharaoh's enemies. As my arrow drank the lion's blood. This has been foretold as my destiny. Then is the destiny of Egypt to be written in blood? It has always been, sire. As long as there's war, blood must flow. What is your request? An appointment, sire, as an officer in your guards. Your request is granted. I wish he'd have to be our cheesemaker. Shh, princess. I wish he would. The sun is setting. Forgive me all. I will return to my meditations. Come, my children. Come in, physician. My mother wishes a word with you. He won't hurt you. Some more beer. Come all closer. So, you never learned who your parents were. Surely you tried to find out. Speak up. I'm content with the parents I have, Your Majesty. In what year were you cast adrift? In the same year that Pharaoh was born. Or so I've been told. Why does Your Majesty... You're not here to ask questions. My mother wishes you to examine her. I know that I'm dying. I want to know how long it will take. Don't be shy.
<laughs> Once I enjoyed the touch of a man's hand. How long ago? Why do you stop, physician? To admire the way a queen can weave a mat of reeds? Those are fowler's knots. Didn't you know that my family were bird catchers in the lower kingdom? And I caught an eagle in my net, Pharaoh himself. He loved me, Sinoe, because I was strong and lusty, because I was vulgar and unlettered and told him the truth. His other wives, the high-born, delicate ones with their narrow heads, how they hated me. So I swore that I would give him a son to wear the double crown. And I did. But the gods were perverse. They gave me a son as soft as a woman and a daughter as hard as a man. Bakatoman here should be Pharaoh, not her brother. Well, what do you find? If your majesty will forgive me. Tell her the truth. If you want to live much longer, you must give up this strong brew. What impudence. I was drinking beer before you were born. Your majesty asked me for the truth. Now I'll give you some advice, young man. Never tell the truth to an old woman, especially if she asks for it. Go now, you weary me. What did you want? I'm not sure. Did you speak of me? No. Someday when I command the armies, I... You know, when I think of her, my blood boils. Tell me, my friend, do you have a potion or something to cool my fever? The wise men say that one evil spirit can only be driven out by another. You mean another woman? Of course. A noble medicine. I know just the place. A woman from Babylon. She gives a banquet every night, and she won't mind two additional guests. Uh, no, I... Look, I... we've got to celebrate our good fortune. Don't worry, my friend. You're always under my protection. Thank you. 
Have you never looked on a woman before? Hundreds, and in the state the gods created them. I'm a physician. Your name? I'm called Sinue, he who is alone. Is this your house? This is my house, and I have guests every evening. I dislike being alone. Baraka? The inscription of the new pharaoh. His gift. I must leave now. Why? Because men bring you rich presents for as little as a smile. And this is all I have. I have never asked a man for anything. But I ask you to stay. I can't. Is it because we women of Babylon have such a bad reputation? Or do you find me so ugly? Do you? You're beautiful beyond all dreams. Such flattery must come easily to a man who's known hundreds of women. No one before has ever seemed to me so beautiful, so strange. When I look in your eyes, I, I feel... What do you feel, Sinue? I feel the fever of Thebes in my blood. And I know that I was born to live in the sunset of the world. And that nothing matters, nothing. But what I see in your eyes. It's late, I... I must be leaving. If you go so fired with wine and wild thoughts, you will surely get into trouble with some designing woman. Would you care? No. I brought you here only to show you the gate and my garden wall. Later, when all my guests have gone, I will be here by my lotus pool. Why do you tell me this? Perhaps because I'm fond of gifts. And the greatest gift any man can bring to a woman is his innocence, which he can give only once. Wait. Before you touch me, I must give you a warning. Warning? There is a reason why the goddess of love takes the form of a cat. When I look at you, I care nothing for cats or gods. Look, Senue. A cat's paws are soft. But they hide claws. A cat takes pleasure in tormenting its victim. 
Not until the creature is nearly dead will it show pity and put an end to it. What has this to do with you and me? You've had little experience. And I must be what I am. Leave now. And do not return through the gate in my wall. Or you may regret it all your life. I don't even know your name. In their foolishness, men give me the name which means beautiful. Never. 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 It's no business of mine where he spends his time. Well, if you don't consider it your business, why are you so angry with me? Get out. Hmm. For a full week now, he's told me to send his patients to other physicians. I've even had to return the coppers I'd accepted for appointments with him. This woman's stolen his mind. He's as mad as a jackal that prowls round the graves. Time drought. <laughs> I'm as mad as he is. It was you I warned him against. Then why come to me now? Oh, what are worse things than marriage? How could I be such a fool even to dream of it? He's physician to Pharaoh and I'm... Carpenter, what can I do? Offer him more than she can. Why do you wait, Sinaway? I've told you that tonight I'm engaged. I'm entertaining a merchant from Syria. If he touches you, I'll kill him. <laughs> Only foolish boys speak in such terms. I must confess, in a way, I find you appealing. Very appealing. You're not like the others. You're young and strong and innocent. But unfortunately, I must protect myself. Women like me who live alone cannot afford to give in to their weaknesses or they end their days begging in the streets. I offer you my protection for as long as you live. Men have said that to me so many times. In so many tongues. Lessons in a way. I live in Egypt because I can never return to Babylon. When I was 12 years old, I was sold as a slave and passed from one master to another. Is there any difference in your life now? A very great difference. For now, no man is my master. So the Syrian merchant who dines with me tonight brings me a ruby that once belonged to a queen. But to give away a present from Pharaoh is sacrilege. I ask for nothing. I only want you to understand.
You must go now. My guest will be here at any moment. Send him away. I told you why I can't. Send him away. You're hurting me. I've given you the only thing of value that I have. Isn't that what you wanted? What deceivers men are. And you're the same as all the rest. You're not so poor as you pretend, in a way. You have a house and many fine instruments of copper. If I give them to you, will you promise me? I promise nothing. If you wish to give me a present, do so. But ask nothing from me, as I ask nothing from you. I'm an evil woman, Sinoe. From the very beginning, I warned you. Keep your house and your instruments and go. Your Highness shoots well for a woman. A child's game. I see one promotion. Why not? A real soldier here is like a falcon among sparrows. I wish a word with you. Over here. May I say I've long dreamed of a word with you. We won't discuss your dreams. I wish to speak of your friend, the physician. Why are you so interested in him? My brother's been asking for him. He hasn't yet presented himself at court. Sinue has uh, left the city. He's gone to Memphis, I think. If you hope for further promotions, don't lie to me. I love my friend enough to lie for him. Even to a royal princess. What do you want? I want him saved from this creature who's stolen his wits. That's easy. She's a Babylonian. Have her banished or killed. He'd follow her into exile or mourn over a grave the rest of his life. No. He must be made to see that she's worthless. And how do you expect to accomplish that? By letting him find out that she's betrayed him with his best friend. You shouldn't find that too difficult. Such women like to be assaulted as if they were fortresses. <laughs> your Highness flatters me. I value you in the same way that you value yourself. Give me that bracelet. You want a reward for helping the friend you love so much? I want it for the Babylonian. Oh? Then you're afraid that your manly charms won't be enough? Not for her. My friends are watching us. They think you're awarding me an honor. Let them think what they will. Someday you'll strip your arms of honors for me your ankles and your neck. Save your passions for the Babylonian. She'll appreciate them more than I do.
Open up. Let me in. The hour is late. I have orders to admit no one. Your mistress is expecting me. I had a message from her. Those are my orders. Go. He knows you're here. I don't care. Do you? I sent him no message to come tonight. I took the liberty of sending one in your name. Do you mind? So that's it. C'est une écoutez, Hannah Toffer. Badu. Go now. that brought me here. Can't you see what she is? The only reason I came here was to prove it to you. Damn it. Never call me friend again. Get out. Very well. You'll deserve everything you get from her. You may go too. This is my house and it is not a tavern. Never, wait. Look, here. I've brought you what you asked. The deed to my house. My instruments. I never asked you for this trash. Hannah Toffer. all I have, and not entirely trash. The house is small, but it's fitted up for a physician's use. The instruments are the finest. They're worth as much as precious jewels. There. Now you own everything that was mine. Senue, please. I'm tired. You always have some excuse. Never, I... Wait. Since you won't listen to my warnings, you force me to treat you like my other friends. What more do you want from me? For you, I've disobeyed Pharaoh, disgraced my family, beggared myself. And still you lied to me. Lie? How? Why have you chosen not to tell me that your father has a fine house on the waterfront? I can't give you what isn't my own. Or that he has built and furnished for his wife and himself a splendid tomb in the city of the dead. You're asking me to rob my parents of immortality? To let their bodies rot into nothingness like the carcasses of slaves and animals? I ask for nothing. But if you do this one thing for me, I will show you the final perfection of love.
What are you doing here? You haven't been to the tavern for many days. I had to see you. The man you know is dead. Forget him. I can never forget him. Sinaway, please listen to me. I want to help you. I'm not without experience. You learn a great deal about life in a tavern. Every night I see the hunger in men's eyes. With a tavern maid, they don't trouble to hide it. There are some who approach you arrogantly, demanding. Like your friend Horemheb. That kind can never be hurt by a woman. Then there are those too shy to ask. But the hunger is in their eyes too. They are the ones who are unarmed. Because they're afraid to approach a woman who might make them happy, they fall an easy victim to the other kind. They think they're in love because they have no way of knowing what love is. What are you trying to say? What I shouldn't have to say when you come home at this hour and find me waiting for you. If you wish to help me, you can. Here are the deeds to my parents' house, to the tomb which they thought would give them immortality. Here is her name, the new owner. Read it, Mary. Never, never, never. Sinaway, you can't. The deeds have to be witnessed. Be the first to sign. Go on, sign! If you can't write, make your mark. God's have pity on you. and tomb are yours. From this hour I am accursed and disgraced before gods and men. It's a high price to pay. Now prove to me that it's not too high. How should I prove it, Sinoe? By keeping your promise. Promise? What did I promise? Perfection of love. I did. Say no way. As I've already told you, I find you very appealing. Are you quite sure that perfection is what you want? Yes. Then you shall have it. I will end your misery. C'est cool. Show this man to the door. Never admit him to my house again. Every philosopher knows that we spend our lives seeking perfection. And find it only in an ending. Ending? Sooner or later, even a cat tires of its game.
once again I came alone and in darkness to the house of my parents. The house that was no longer theirs. As you should know, Master, a physician can turn his skill to taking life as well as to saving it. Your father left this for you. Read it. Can't. And listen. To Sinoe, our son, we are grieved for your sake because you have met with ill fortune. Do not regret that you were required to sell our tomb, for all existence is vanity. We desire no life in the hereafter. Remember always that we blessed you before we left. For you who came to us from the river when we were already old, were the greatest joy of our lives. May your heart be shielded from sorrow. Such is the desire of your father and your mother. <laughs> Put him to work. For 90 days, I labored among the accursed in the house of death. It was as if I had died myself, and only my servant captor knew what I had done or where I was. What are you doing here? Speak or I'll bash your head in. Are you a god? God. No god would dare show his face here after dark. You're a grave robber. I didn't come here to steal. What do you want then? I brought my parents here to bury them. In the Valley of the Kings? 
I hoped that if I buried them here, they might share the wealth of the pharaohs in the other world. Other world? Hmm. It's true there are many pharaohs planted here, but I have yet to see one of them putting on any shoots. And it's certain they don't see the gifts, because we get them first. You don't believe in another life. They did. You're a strange one. I'll help you dig. I wish somehow I could mark their graves. Marked or unmarked, it's all the same. 20 years to build a pyramid, or 10 minutes to scrape a hole in the sand. The dead are dead no matter where we put them. In the end, the sand conquers all. Every grain of sand will outlive every man alive and every man that ever will be born. Immortality? Hm. I hold it in my hand. Only the little grains of sand will never die. Listen. A jackal? A jackal with two legs. One of my friends warning us there's a stranger coming. Here, the shadow.
cry out when the pain is greatest. No Hittite warrior cries out in pain. There? Yes. It's as I feared, Lord Commander. Your skull must be opened and the evil removed with a knife. Is this an Egyptian plot? To murder our commander at a time at when we At a time are... when you're planning war on Egypt? It was you that brought me here from Babylon, my lords. I take no interest in your plans. I have no country, Egypt least of all. Shall I undertake your cure? What chance have I to survive? One chance in five. If I die, my officers will kill you. I know that. And if I live, what will you demand? Your sword of black metal. Nothing more. Then you are a spy. It doesn't matter. After the first skirmish, our secret will no longer be secret. After the second, Egypt will no longer be Egypt. Proceed, Egyptian. Shave his head and wash it. Tie him to this chair securely. I'll prepare a draft to dull his pain. Master, Master, it's you and not the Hittite commander who's to have a whole board in your head. Why do you only ask for a sword? You could have demanded a forge. Because I think this new metal of the Hittites may change the history of the world. And because Horemheb now commands the army in Egypt. Oh, so you lied. There is a key to your heart after all. You still love your native land. Yes, but you can never go back there. No pharaoh ever forgives his enemies. Bring my instruments in the flame. Captor, we're going home. Home. But Egypt, Egypt was a stricken land, torn by hatred and civil strife. the Hittites, Master, but I fear this more. Better if we never come. Your name, Syrian? I am an Egyptian. My name is Sinue, once physician to the Pharaoh. You must have been bitten by a rabid ape when you were small. You know that if your name's on that list of prescribed criminals, well, you know the Egyptians. <laughs> Seize them. Take them, I tell you. Uh, no, there must be some mistake. Look, look at your list again. Look at your list again. Delta from the cataracts. Your duty is to keep order in the city. You should be able to do it with the men you have. You were told never to return to Egypt. Why did you come back? It is said that he who has drunk of Nile water can never quench his thirst in other lands. I know why you're here. The priests of the old gods hope to rid themselves of Pharaoh. They whisper that he's mad and his skull should be opened. It would be a simple matter to let the knife slip. So they brought back to Egypt the one man who's master of the operation. You. Give me the sword you took from my servant. Give it to him. This is why I came back to Egypt. Draw your sword. Stand back. And now? Strike at me, hard. Do you know what you're asking, my friend? Strike. 
Again, harder. Where did you get this? In the land of the Hittites. Hundreds of forgers are at work there, night and day, making weapons of this new metal. It is called iron. Come with me. Temple where Pharaoh worships his one God. Look. I've seen the sorrow this one God has brought upon Egypt. It was the priests, not Pharaoh, who brought this sorrow on us. It was they who blamed the misfortunes of Egypt on Pharaoh and made the people believe that thus the old gods show their anger. If I had my way, I'd hang every priest by his heels. But our pharaoh believes in repaying treachery with kindness. Come. Apologize, sire, for interrupting your prayers. I have urgent news. The Lord Commander owes me no explanation. I bring you someone that you will remember. Sinue, the physician. Sinue? Yes. He asked that you grant him pardon, sire. And I, as commander of the army, also urge you to be merciful. It is I who should ask your pardon, Sinue. For once I raised my hand against you, I would have killed you. It delights me to see you. Sinue just returned from the land of the Hittites. They're preparing war against us. They've succeeded in making a new metal. He brought this sword as proof. It cuts through our Egyptian copper like a knife through straw. How could all this be true? I've sent the cross of life to the Hittite princes. I've promised them my friendship. Ah, not my mad friend. Do you think they care for your cross of life? They want loot, slaves, power. And with this, they'll get them. Unless you let me strike first. Destroy their cities, their mines, and their forges. Are you asking me to condone slaughter? I'm asking you to show our enemies the same mercy they'd show us. No more, no less. There's mercy in every man's heart, if we can only reach it. A man who has lived in darkness all his life doesn't understand the light. He calls it evil because it hurts his eyes. But should we then extinguish our lights and crawl into the darkness with him? Such wisdom has already filled the Nile with corpses. Sire, again this morning, rioting broke out on the waterfront. I had to send soldiers in to stop it. Don't you see, Sire, a war now will unite our country. Once again, the Egyptians will stand together, brothers against a common foe. He is right, my husband. Even you, so near to me then is the darkness. You should listen to Horomir. I can listen only to Aton. I will write to the Hittite princes, asking them to make their intentions clear. Thank you for coming. Now do you see what I have to contend with? Could he prevent you from doing what you want with the army? No. The men follow me, not him. But he is Pharaoh, and I've sworn him oath of loyalty. He'll write to the Hittites. <laughs> he might as well invite them to come take his throne. Would it matter? I've seen rulers great and small, old and young, 
warlike and effeminate. The people suffer and die, whatever the ruler calls himself, Hittite, Egyptian, Cretan. It's bad to believe in too much like Pharaoh, but it's worse to believe in too little, my friend. I believe in nothing. While Egypt tore herself in civil strife, I doubled my fortune as physician to the wealthy. Send away the other patients. I'm tired. I'll see no more today. I think you'll see this one, Master. You might find it rewarding. Oh, is the fee so high? Not high, but interesting. again tomorrow. I'm, I'm very sorry. There's nothing I can do. Can you help me? Tell me what ails you. Give me your hand. Open your robe. I can save your life, but I can't restore your beauty. The trouble has eaten too far for that. Uh, Do you want to live, Nefa? Yes. Yes, I want to live. Come back tomorrow morning. I will undertake your cure. I cannot pay you. Your color was all I had left. There will be no fee for my services. Ten years I've dreamed of this, of meeting her again, when I would be the master. Of taking my revenge, slowly, savoring it. Mm. What do you feel now that you have your chance? Only pity. <laughs> Sorrow. Because once she was so beautiful, and a cat can't help being what it is. It's strange, Captain. Revenge leaves you as empty as fame and fortune. Eat your fill of all of them, and you're still just as hungry. Master, what is it you want? I don't know. 
But whatever it is, I've been searching for it in the wrong places. Master, it's dangerous to walk in this quarter unescorted. Sights and sounds and smells can make the past live again. This is where I used to draw water for my father. It was a long time ago. Look, Captain. This is the tree that I learned to climb when I could barely walk. What are you doing? Give me that cross. Let him Come alone. On, Stop that. Go on. Go on. Are you hurt? No. Where do you live? Over there. Thoth, my poor darling. I'm all right. You're bleeding. It's nothing. Some of those other boys didn't like my cross. I'll take you to a physician. May I help? Yes, my lord, you can. This is the Lord Sinaway, Thoth, a very famous physician. I must get linen for a bandage. I'll get it. Merit. After all these years. You've been in my prayers, Sinaway. I'm grateful to your God, if it was he who brought us together. Won't you come in? You knew this was my father's house. The house was cheap. I, I needed a place of my own. You and your husband? I'm not married. I found the bandages, Mother. Mother? Well, he's the child of a friend, an orphan, but he doesn't know that. He thinks I'm his mother. Sinaway, please... I understand. Your secret is safe with this orphan. Please come in. Here are the bandages and instruments if you have to use them. I'm going to be a physician, too. I hope you use these with more credit than I did. I bought them the same time as I bought the house. I see. Yes. I pray that Artem would teach you humility and manners. Now I know we've come home. Only in Egypt does a woman's tongue take so sharp an edge. Now in two days you can take off the bandage. But not before. Do you understand? Why? Why? Oh, I mean, what will happen if I do? Probably nothing. I spoke sternly to you because physicians should always be firm with their patients. You'll find out. It increases their respect for you and also the size of your fees. But I will be physician to the poor. Oh. But the rich have more interesting ailments and can better afford them. No, I will work for the poor. I'm hungry. Are you? I could eat a hippopotamus. 
Well, we're having fish. Hurry up, Mother! Yes, hurry. Be quiet, both of you. Come here. Now clean your instruments and put them away. You think you see so much with your one eye? More than my master does with two. If you dare to tell him... Why should I tell him? I like my life as it is. Without a woman to pour hot water over my feet because I displease her. Questioning my accounts, rationing my beer. Hush! Married. I didn't ask you to come here to pry into my life. I didn't expect to... It's the smoke. Perhaps you think the smoke has blinded me, too. What does the Lord Sinaway, the great, rich and cynical Lord Sinaway, want with a tavern maid? You call me great and rich, but I have nothing. I'm the poorest of men because I've wasted my life. Everything I ever touched, I destroyed. My birthright, my parents. Your life too, Merit. But you've given me something. Perhaps an answer to the question I've asked myself ever since I was a boy. Not your God, because I don't believe in gods. But one thing I created which wasn't a waste. If it's too late to live for ourselves, perhaps we can begin to live for our son. Let me offer you a priceless jewel of wisdom. Never peer through windows at matters which don't concern you. That's how I happen to have only one eye. Did you intend to pass without speaking to me? I beg your highness pardon, but Pharaoh has sent for me. I know. It's been many years, physician. The look of innocence is gone. If your highness would excuse me. You've heard the news? The Hittites have invaded Syria. Their chariots are approaching the delta of the Nile. Then the war has begun. No. My brothers refused to give Horam have permission to fight. Then he must be mad. I've known that for a long time. Physician. After you've seen my brother, come to my chamber. Your Majesty. Thank you for coming. Sire. My friend. Sire, you must give Haram her permission to defend Egypt. No. No. Right or wrong, I will not order death. I cannot plunge Egypt into a bath of blood. They say I'm mad. Haram Heb. The priests. Even my own sister. I'll be right soon away. Am I mad? You are mad, sire. But your madness is more beautiful than the wisdom of other men. Beautiful. Yes, my vision of Aton was beautiful. I thought he would give peace and happiness to all men. I thought I could be his voice and bring his message to my people. But I was wrong. The vision has faded. My voice was no more than a whisper of wind in the desert. Aton has abandoned me. 
to war, to madness, to death. If you love me, Sinoe, lift the burden from my soul. Give me peace. A physician's task is to prolong life, sire, not to shorten it. He should rest now. I'm sorry, but his illness is not of the body, Your Majesty. What is it you want? What Pharaoh himself asked you for, to give him peace. You have more courage than I thought. If Horemheb were to learn of this. My men are ready. The loyal Lord Commander. You too. Look, Senue. I love Ignatin as I love my own right arm. But if my arm were gangrened, I'd cut it off. Just as Akhenaten must be cut off from Egypt. All Egypt knows that I'm right. And you know it. Yes. Yes, in your place, I'd tell myself the same thing. Have you a potion that will give him sleep without pain? I? I am to kill him when all around me there is such a talent for violence? Do this and the gods will bless you forever. I see. You speak for the gods and Haramheb for Egypt. Tell me one thing. Who succeeds to the throne? Who else but the commander of the armies that will save Egypt and make her once more the greatest power in the world? Yes. Horemheb. You, Pharaoh. So that's the price for your treason. Call it treason if you like. But there's only one thing that can save Egypt now. And that's courage. Courage to act. Courage to conquer our enemies and put their leaders in chains. Agnarton is in his chamber. He is helpless. Now is your chance to strike. But you won't, will you? Because no hand has ever been raised openly against a pharaoh. If you strike him down, then the way will be clear. The precedent established for someone else to strike down the next pharaoh, whose name you hope will be Horemheb. So this dirty thing must be done by indirection, as it's always been done in the past, by a physician pretending to heal him by a physician who's known to be his friend. I'm sorry, but I'm not that man. Wait outside. Don't go far away. Your Highness wished to see me. Are you going to do what they want? No. You should agree. Akhenaten must die. For his own sake. Now it's for his own sake. Mekere wants to kill him for the gods, Horemheb for Egypt and his sister for his own sake. Any hunter will show mercy to a wounded animal. Did they tell you how they planned to dirty the throne? They told me that Haramheb is to be Pharaoh. And I am to be his queen. He's to come to my chamber tonight. And tomorrow our marriage will be proclaimed in the temples of the old gods. I see. A good plan. This marriage will make him acceptable to the people. But not to me, physician. When I marry, it'll be to no cheesemaker's son. Leave. 
We haven't much time. Harmeb's men are in control of the city. Tonight, the priests will openly restore the old gods and make a sacrifice of blood. But together, we can beat them. Harmeb and all the evil priests. Sinewe, come here. This is what you must do. Pretend to fall in with their plans. Kill my brother and kill Horemheb too. Two matters. They come to my chamber tonight and I'll gladly open the doors with my own hands, willingly share the throne with you as Pharaoh. Why should the people accept a nameless physician as their Pharaoh? Because you are Pharaoh. You're my half-brother. The only man in Egypt fit to be my husband and rule by my side. Why do you think my mother and I sent for you the day you first came to the palace? Before she died, she told me everything. And left it to my judgment if you should ever hear the truth. She was not the first to bear my father the pharaoh a son. A few weeks before, one of his other wives was delivered of a boy child. You. You were taken away from your mother, cast adrift on the river in a boat tied with fowler's knots. Tied by my mother herself, who was a fowler's daughter. And the mother failed to notice that her newborn had disappeared? She was shown a dead girl baby and told it was hers. <sighs> Hundreds of babies are cast adrift every year. And boats are often tied with fowler's knots. In the lower kingdom, not in Thebes. But there's stronger evidence than that. Get my chariot. Come with me to the Valley of the Kings, to my father's tomb. And see for yourself. The great Pharaoh, my father, and yours. Look, the finest artist in Thebes made this, his exact likeness. Look at the nose, the cheekbones, the forehead, the line of the jaw. You wanted further proof. Look. mother saw when you stood before us in the throne room. What no one else but she could recognize. The face of her husband as a young man. The great Pharaoh come to life again in you. Now have you any doubts? Leave me alone here. You know that I've shown you the truth. 
Yes. Now I'm sure that it's true. But would Horam have ever accept such proof? Of course not. He's eaten up with his own ambition. He's gone much too far. He couldn't turn back now, even if he wanted to. That's why he must be killed, along with Akhenaten. You hold Egypt in your hand, my brother. The power of a god is yours, if only you have the courage to seize it. What's that? What is it? Horemheb has begun his holy war. Every follower of Pharaoh's god has been marked for death. A massacre. Why should we care? Let Horemheb prepare the ground for us. When my brother's dead and we rule, we'll be better off without these fanatics. Let them go! Take this money and these jewels and find a boat. Buy one. Steal it if you have to. And you? I'll find Merit. We'll come to you when we can. But don't wait for us. Get the boy out of the city. Yes. I want to go with you. No. You must go with Captain, my son. Now hurry. Hurry! Is this yours? I never saw it before in my life. You're lying. I saw you throw it away. Be sensible, Captain. Do I look like a follower of the accursed Arton? They're simple people. They're honest people. And I'm the biggest rogue in all Egypt. Is this your cross? Uh, Captain, you have an honest, intelligent face. Uh, I always collaborate with the soldiers. I was a soldier myself, in fact. Uh, gave my eye for my country. Well, if that's all, I... Kill him. Uh, but kill me for a thousand crimes, but not for one I never committed. I hate the gods. The gods hate me. Uh, oh, I'll take everything then. This, that, gold, silver, everything I don't have. Life worth living. <laughs> You made a beggar out of me, and I shall starve to death for as long as I live. Let him go. <laughs> Come on. What can you pay? What can you pay? Give me your jewels. Go aboard. Only those who can pay can go aboard. Give me your jewels. Give me your gold. Only those who can pay can go aboard. Come on. Step up. Help in the front. Step up here. Captain, how can we pay? You gave those soldiers everything. Not quite everything. All right. All right. Go aboard. Here. Come on. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Here, you. Step over here. What have you got? The savings of a dishonest lifetime. Come on. Come on. Step up here. Uh, please. Please. What can you pay? Uh, take this ruby. The child won't take up much room. All right. Let him go. Only those who can pay can go aboard. Come along. There. Sit here. What have you got? <sighs> Well, I fear that at my age, in all innocence, I'm becoming a father.
erledigt. Thoth? He is with Kepta. With Kepta, he'll be safe. Take the ones that are still alive to the dungeon. I want this temple torn down, every stone of it. Yes, Commander. I just follow me. I'm sorry, my friend. It had to be done. It wasn't you that killed her, but that madman in the palace. He and his one god. She believed in his god, and she's dead. Is he still alive? Yes, he's at the palace. Then go to the palace, and I'll meet you there before dawn. together in this business, Harlem Head, as we've always been bound since we were boys together. Since what we do is for the good of Egypt, you should be honored to have a direct part in it. Go and make sure he's awake. Arrange for our audience. Don't worry. What's needed will be in Pharaoh's cup. you leave me there in the street? Where did you go? To bury a dream. It's dead now and forgotten. The Horemheb. For me. What do you mean? Horemheb's no fool. How can I persuade him to drink unless I drink as well? But you'll die. I'm a physician. This oil will smother the poison until I can come back here and swallow this emetic. But if something goes wrong? Then I'll die in any case. Be careful, my brother. I'll be waiting for you. Let's not pretend, my sister, that our bargain is for anything but power. Perhaps you can't be blamed for the evil in you. It's not your fault that you were warped and twisted like a tree forced to flower forever and never bear fruit. What you are, you were made to be by others. But I made the evil in myself, and I know it for evil. You must go. Why 
did you bar the door? I couldn't be sure that it would be you who came. Is everything ready? He's in the great hall praying to his one god. Which cup is his? The one he will take.
Poor soul. He was mad to the end. I will make sacrifice to the gods in his behalf. They won't refuse me now. For I'm one of them. I am Egypt. Your cup's in your way. Drink with me. Drink to the beginning of a new Egypt. Hold him, Hib. Don't drink it. Or you won't be Egypt or anything. You dared. Put on the crown and go to the princess. She will be greatly surprised, for it isn't you she expects. But you can prevail and make yourself divine. You really dared. You're the pharaoh that Egypt wants. But that isn't why I spared you. Don't thank me for your life. Thank this poor, sick fool here. For it was he who saved us both. Save me? Are you mad too? I'm Pharaoh. Silence! Pharaoh comes! On your faces! On your faces before the living God! Sire, the commanders of the defeated armies beg mercy of Pharaoh. I will deal with them later. Let the physician come forward. On your knees. Let him stand. What are the charges against this man? He has publicly spoken against Pharaoh. He has belittled Pharaoh's victories in Syria and the land of the Hittites. He has blasphemed against the gods and committed other acts of treason without number. Once we stood together before this throne and you spoke up for my life. Is there anyone here who will speak up for this man? You, my devoted wife? No. 
You will have to speak for yourself, physician. Not for myself, sire. But for one whose memory you've tried to wipe out, whose very name you've sought to destroy, for Ignaton. Do you flaunt your treason in my face? That name is forbidden. Take care, physician, or I will... Will, will what you will. You will go to war and win a battle. You will conquer and not know that it is defeat. You will raise Egypt to glory and watch her die. We live in the twilight of our world, Horemheb. And you will be at sunset. Nations rise only to fall. Kings build mighty monuments only to have them crumble into dust. Glory flees like a shadow. All these things have the seeds of death in them. Only a thought can live. Only a great truth can grow and flourish, and a truth cannot be killed. It passes in secret from one man's heart to another. It is given in a mother's milk to her child. Are you trying to tell me that you'll fight against me? Oh, you will win that too. For if you fail to silence me, you know what I will do. What will you do, physician? I will go among the people and try to answer the questions that burden their hearts. The questions that I've asked myself all my life, wherever I've wandered in the world, and which were answered for me by a dying man. I will wear the clothes of a slave and kick the sandals from my feet and speak to the wives as they fry their fish before their mud huts by the river, to the porters on the docks, to the smiths by their bellows, to the slaves under their yokes. And I will say, a man cannot be judged by the color of his skin, by his clothes, his jewels, or his triumphs, but only by his heart. A good man is better than a bad man. Justice is better than injustice. He who uses mercy is superior to him who uses violence, though the latter call himself Pharaoh and make himself master of the earth. We have but one master, the God who made us all. Only his truth is immortal, and in his truth all men are equal. No man is alone. The sentence, exile for life. spent my life in seeking knowledge and this is all I know I have written this for you my son wherever you are and for your children and your children's children it's a poor legacy but it's all I have 